Book of Genesis, Chapter 16 Sarai and Dakar Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring, so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant, and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a walled donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of seeing. For she said, Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Barad. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the, the name of his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. So, in this chapter, we hear of the story of Abram listening to his wife when Sarai, his wife, tells him to conceive with her servant to bear him a child, essentially, right? Because, you know... Abram wanted a child, but Sarai was not able to give him a child, so she let Hagar, her servant, be like a like a step like a stand in mother, essentially. And something that I find very interesting here is that when Hagar runs away from Sarai and Abram, she runs into the angel of the Lord and he talks to her. Now, I'm going to go into why I think this is very important once I get to it in my notes, but it is very important, right? So, first note that I took was 16.2, verse 2, right? And Sarai said to Abram, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant, it may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So... This sort of mirrors, well, not mirrors, it's sort of, well, yeah, it, it mirrors, right? It reflects how Adam listened to Eve in the garden. It reflects how Sarai had convinced Abram to commit the sin of adultery. The same way that Eve had convinced Adam to eat from the apple. And in verse 5, And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. Here we also see that Sarai is placing the blame, in a sense, on Abram, right? She's telling Abram that the wrong that has been done to Sarai should be on Abram. And this sort of reflects, this like truly mirrors 
the situation in the Garden of Eden between Adam and Eve because Adam had blamed Eve for the consumption of the apple. When the Lord had confronted Adam, he told the Lord that it was the woman that had convinced him. And in this way, Sarai is now saying out loud to be heard by the Lord that the wrong that has been done to her, the dishonor that she has brought upon her, well, she, she convinced Abram to commit adultery. So it wasn't just that she brought the dishonor upon herself, but also that the dishonor was brought on also by Abram. But she wants that dishonor to be on Abram. So again, that mirrors how Adam wanted the blame to be put on Eve, but switching the roles around. And then 16 verse 7 to verse 13, the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness onto, so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are a God of seeing. The angel of the Lord, when referred to as the angel, is Jesus. It is the flesh, well, it is Jesus before he became the Lord, right? It is referred to as the angel of the Lord. Well, he's referred to as the angel of the Lord. So here we see that the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said to, and he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. So here we see a very similar promise that God has made to Abram. Where? Here, I'm going to find it real quick. Look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number him. If you are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. So we get a very similar promise to the promise that the Lord had given to Abram. But this time from the angel of the Lord to Hagar. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a walled donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So the name, which means God hears, again backs up this idea of the angel of the Lord being Jesus, right? Because Jesus had heard Hagar speak about the problem that she was facing at that point and the Lord had heard her so she called the so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her you are a God of seeing for she said truly here I have seen him who looks after me truly here I have seen him who looks after me she has seen the Lord and in the New Testament, it is said by Jesus, whoever has seen me has seen the Lord. So again, this just backs up that idea of the angel of the Lord referring to Jesus. So here we see that Hagar has seen Lord, the Lord, right? She has seen Jesus Christ. And another interesting detail that I didn't really take note of, but is still very interesting. Therefore, the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. I'm probably butchering that name, right? But in the footnotes here on the Bible, Beer Lahai Roy means the well of the living one who sees me. So this is where she saw the living God. This is where she saw the living Jesus. 
Another little detail that I want to put in there. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. This reflects that God will look after us into our very old age. He will give, when he gives a promise, he will fulfill it within our lifespan. So yeah, that's everything I have to say today. Uh, thank you for watching. Keep running when no one else is. Have a blessed day.